What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel if you're new here. Um, today I'm just going to be going through and giving the basically the TTK charts for all of the Cold War weapons in uh, Warzone. This is going to be new information, um, and I haven't really looked for, through it that much yet, but uh, I'm just going to go through TTK charts like I said and compare to like the other top uh, current weapons in the meta from Modern Warfare and... Of course, all of this is ignoring the DMR-14 because the DMR-14 is just so overpoweringly good right now that you can't really get away from it. But in the future, when they nerf the DMR, um, all of this information will be a lot more relevant then. But uh, yeah, let's hop into it and I'll start uh, giving my opinions on these Cold War guns. Alright, so I'm going to start with the XM4. So this is a TTK chart, uh, chest shots, 250 health, uh, M4A1, for, so the Modern Warfare uh, M4 is the orange line with the new damage profile found from the stuff I talked about in my video yesterday so this is the Warzone specific profile then we have the XM4 in pink and the fastest TTK weapon in Warzone I believe is the AMAX for uh, longer ranges the, the fastest killing viable weapon I should say besides like you know DMR14 um, so I just wanted to put all those on here to compare so uh, the M4A1 the Modern Warfare M4 is a very very good all-around gun um, it kills pretty fast up close and still kills pretty, pretty fast at range and it's accurate all around. Um, and you can see the XM4 actually kills a little bit faster than the M4 out to 22 meters. Um, and keep in mind these are, this is all with no attachments. Um, I don't have the attachment data yet. I'll be doing that after this, um, over the next week or so, hopefully, uh, trying to get the attachment data for all the Cold War guns. But, um, for now, no attachment data. Uh, but anyway, I'm just comparing base guns here anyway, so... All of this is going to scale probably similarly in the end. But uh, you can see the XM4, like I said, kills a little faster than the Modern Warfare M4 up close, which is saying a lot because the M4 has a pretty good TTK for an AR up close. Uh, and then out at range, it actually kills quite a bit faster than the M4. So I think if we can get some more um, bounce control on the XM4, it's going to be a really good gun. Um, I've actually, I love the floor loot XM4. Um, I don't have it fully leveled yet, so seeing this, I definitely want to get it leveled because this is going to be a pretty, uh, pretty good gun. Obviously, it's not going to kill as fast as the chest as the CR-56, but again, I talked about this in my last video. The CR-56 only has that TTK uh, if you hit every single chest shot. If you miss one chest shot, your TTK goes up by I think it's like 67 milliseconds or something like that. So it brings you, it bring you up to like right here. Uh, still below, still faster than the XM4, but a lot better. So if we put it on uh, stomach. Yeah, put it on stomach, you're going to see the XM4 and the M4A1 from Modern Warfare both kill faster up close, and then uh, the XM4 kills a little bit faster all the way out, basically the same. I mean, that's not really a difference that's tangible, uh, but the M4 slows down a lot like we saw before. So I think the XM4 is going to be pretty pretty competitive if we can get attachments that boost bullet velocity and uh, boost the bounce, or help with the bounciness of the gun. All right, so next up is the Krig-6. So the Krig-6 is now this uh, light blue cyan line. Uh, still, I'm comparing it to the M4 and the CR-56 just because I think those are, um, you know, good guns to compare them to because they're just, they cover a lot of bases between the two of them. So um, Krig-6 kills quite a bit slower than the M4 up close and the CR-56. Again, I'm starting on 250 health chest shots. Um, and uh, out of range, the Krig-6 gets a lot better. It's close to the M4, a little slower than the M4. Um, but it does uh, have really good accuracy. It bounces quite a bit. This is the same thing I was talking about with the XM4. Um, the Cold War guns don't have a Commando foregrip, uh, and they don't. They they just have a lot more like horizontal bounce because of that. You can't really stabilize them as much as Modern Warfare guns, and you can't get the bullet velocity as high as Modern Warfare guns. So I'm really hoping they um, they kind of adjust the Cold War attachments to be more like the Modern Warfare attachments because right now building a Cold War gun just feels awkward. Uh, and it's not just because we don't know what all the attachments do and how much they affect things. It's also just because the attachments uh, conflict each other in different ways than the Modern Warfare attachments. So it's kind of hard to build guns right now with how the attachments are set up. So I hope they kind of modify that a little bit as time goes on. Uh, but let's just switch to extremities and see how this compares there. Um, so it's the same story. Uh, exactly the same TTK as it had had before. So it's much slower than the M4, and then a little bit slower out of range than the M4. But again, it is very easy to control, so we could see this being a pretty viable gun. All right, next up we have the QBZ. QBZ is similar to the Krig in that it is is very accurate, doesn't have very much recoil at all, uh, but it just doesn't have a competitive TTK really. So you can see it's slower than the M4 by a significant amount up close. 
uh, and then slower again by an even bigger amount at range. So um, all of these charts I'm showing include the bullet velocity, so the bullet travel time to the target. So that's why they're all slanted instead of uh, per perfectly horizontal. Um, but I did actually get the bullet velocity for all these guns before making this video. That's one of the stats I gathered for all of them. So the uh, bullet travel time should be correct for all of them in these charts. But this is uh, this is chest shot. Let's look at extremities for the QBZ. Uh, QBZ is cyan color, just to clarify. Um, yeah, same story. doesn't change again. So uh, again, just slower than the M4 up close and even slower to a larger degree at range. So... We'll see. I mean, it, it, if it's super accurate, maybe it'll be okay, but uh, just looking at TTKs, um, it doesn't look like it's going to be that competitive. So next up is the Cold War AK-47. So this is going to be 250 plates and chest shots again. So looking at this, the Cold War AK-47 is very good TTK. It's almost competitive with the CR-56, which is saying a lot because the CR-56 has an, an insanely good TTK all the way out at uh, infinite range so uh, the cyan lines the AK-47 from Cold War um, let me add the AK-47 from Modern Warfare just so we have a comparison point uh, with that so here we go AK-47 is one of the guns that didn't have a Warzone specific profile so I don't have to find the specific Warzone version because there isn't one on the website alright so now we have four lines we got the M4 is orange the CR-56 is pink the Cold War AK is cyan, and then the Modern Warfare AK is green. Um, so the Cold War AK kills quite a bit faster than the uh, Modern Warfare AK. Looks like everywhere. So that's uh, also saying a lot because the AK kills pretty fast too. Um, I do know that the Cold War AK has lots and lots of vertical recoil. So it could be just too much recoil to use at range. But that TTK is interesting for like an all-round gun. Like an all-round usage gun depending on... Uh, how controllable that recoil is. Let's jump to extremities and see that. Check that out. Um, so the Cold War AK uh, kills a little bit slower than the M4 here for leg shots, arm shots, uh, but not by much. And then it's actually much faster at range than the M4, and it is faster than the AMAX up close on extremity shots. And then the AMAX takes over by a little bit at range. So if we can find a way to control the recoil on the CR56 or the the uh, Cold War AK47. It could be a very good gun, uh, just looking at TTK. Of course, that's not the whole story. You need bullet velocity, you need good recoil, and um, you just need a good TTK as well. So we'll see. I mean, the, the Cold War AK looks like it has uh, pretty good potential. All right, so for the stoner, I've got it set up to 250 plates, or 250 health, and uh, chest shots as well. Um, so it's the stoner's the cyan line. Um, M4 is still orange. CR-56 is still uh, the pink line. Um, so the stoner, from my experience, I've used it a little bit. Um, it feels like it bounces around a lot. This is a common theme with all the modern, or the, the Cold War weapons. Is they just bounce a lot uh, left to right, which makes them hard to use at longer ranges. TTK-wise, the stoner's decent, and it does have an open bolt delay, so I'm including the open bolt delay uh, in this chart. Uh, so if you don't know what open bolt delay is, that's some guns have an open bolt design, which means there's a delay between when you pull the trigger and the bullet actually firing. And uh, Modern Warfare has incorporated that in. Uh, Black Ops Cold War does not have open bolt delay on any of the LMGs, but I figured they probably did in uh, Warzone, so I tested them for that, and they do. Uh, so the stoner had, like I think it was like 67 millisecond open bolt delay. So if I turn open bolt delay off, you'll see the cyan line goes down. gets a lot better. Um, so at range, really, uh, at range, I don't know if you need to inclu include open bolt delay. It's really for situations where you you and the other person see each other at the exact same time and you both pull the trigger at the same time, then obviously it's in, it should be included in TTK because there's that 67 millisecond delay where they're firing bullets and you're not. So in those situations it should be included, but at range when you are just tracking somebody, you, you can pull the trigger whenever. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be included in those situations, so I'll just show both here. Yeah, so with it off, it's pretty competitive. It's quite a bit faster than the M4, kind of in between the CR-56 and the M4. Uh, but it does have that, that horizontal bounce problem that most of the Cold War guns have. Let's check it out on extremities real fast. Uh, it has a good TTK on extremities, wow. So it's, with open bolt delay off, not included, um, It it's faster than the M4 everywhere and faster than the CR-56 out to 40 meters, and then the same as the CR-56 out to uh, infinity from there. So it could be decent if we can get the recoil under control and get the bullet velocity up. All right, next up is the RPD. So RPD is the cyan line, uh, 250 health, 
and chest shots again. And again, the RPD has an open bolt delay. I think it was a little bit less than the um, the Stoner, if I'm re remembering correctly. All three of the Cold War LMGs had open bolt delays, but they varied a little bit by 10 or 15 milliseconds. So it wasn't a huge difference, but just something to think about. Um, so when you include the open bolt delay, the RPD is not looking super competitive. It's about the same as the M4 at range. Um, so maybe it'd be okay if you if you could get it so accurate that you just didn't miss kind of like the kilo factor where the kilo was really good because it just didn't miss so if you can get this gun to that point then maybe it would be decent at range uh, but it's just not going to be good anywhere inside 40 meters I mean this is a bad TTK uh, compared to other guns that are available that is like the CR-56, M4, um, Ram 7 even the Grau is going to kill faster than the, the RPD up close and you're going to get way faster ADS times with the Grau so I don't know I'm not sure that uh, not sure the RPD is going to be very competitive. Uh, M60. M60 is similar to the RPD, but just kind of worse. So it also has an open bolt delay. So if I turn open bolt delay off, it gets quite a bit better looking. But uh, overall, the TTK with the M60 is just not super competitive. And it is accurate. It does feel like a pretty accurate gun. And it hits pretty hard. But uh, the uh, TTKs just don't come out very good. And and the movement's going to be terrible, the reload speed's bad, so I just I don't see the M60 being competitive at all. All right, now on to the SMGs. So I'm going to compare all the SMGs to the two SMGs that we're probably most uh, most used to seeing in Warzone. So the MAC-10 and the MP5 are going to be the two that uh, I'm going to compare to. So the uh, AK-74U is the first one we're going to talk about. It's the Cyan line. Um, you can see it is it kills quite a bit slower than the MAC-10 and the MP5 up close. Um, it does have a little bit more range and it has better bullet velocity. It has kind of like AR, Cold War AR bullet velocity, which is interesting. Uh, but the TTK numbers aren't very good. And this is kind of like, it's kind of like an MP7. It feels like an MP7. It's super accurate, which occasionally leads you to absolutely frying people because you just don't miss. So I think people have thought this gun's pretty good. Um, and I, I mean, I've experienced that myself. I picked up the ground loot. Uh, the golden ground loot AK-74U, and I just fried people with them. I mean, I got three or four kills back to back, like it was nothing at at longer ranges even. And that's again, I think just because it's so accurate, it's very much like an MP7 in that way. Uh, but yeah, the TTK is not great. So as far as SMGs go, I don't think it's super competitive if you want to use it as an SMG. Um, if you want to use it as like a sniper complement, complement, then maybe it would be okay. Uh, but as a as an SMG, it's not super great for chest shots. So we'll slip it, switch it over to extremities and look at the, look at it then. Um, so it gets much better on extremities. So it kills quite a bit faster than the Mac 10 actually up close, and the same identical number as the MP5 up close. So um, overall, it's not terrible. It's just those chest shots, um, stomach shots. Yeah, stomach shots are the same as chest because uh, the Mac 10 and MP5 do the same to the uh, to the stomach as they do to the chest whereas the AK-74U has no change between stomach, chest, and legs so it'll be a very consistent SMG um, it won't matter where you hit them that's actually rare for an SMG to not have a weird uh, different part of the body damage profile um, so it's okay it's not bad it's super accurate and this extremities KD or extremities uh, TTK is really good so it's not a bad gun alright next up we're taking a look at the bullfrog so the bullfrog um, the bullfrog is super accurate. Again, it's kind of like an MP7, uh, but in this case, I would say it's kind of just a better MP7. So let me actually add the MP7 to this real quick, just so we can look at that. Uh, let's see the Modern Warfare Warzone MP7. Add this in here. 250 health, chest shots. So the MP7 is the green, and the bullfrog is the cyan color. So. The Bullfrog kills a little bit faster than the MP7, and I would say it's just as accurate. Uh, it kills faster everywhere except at longer ranges, so everything past 19 meters, it looks like the MP7 is going to be a little bit better. Uh, Bullfrog also has good bullet velocity for an SMG, uh, so that's kind of rare. And then if we swip, flip it over from chest shots to extremities, the Bullfrog actually kills faster than the MAC-10 with extremity shots, and... Uh, a little bit slower than the MP5, but a lot faster than the MP7. So I think the Bullfrog um, is a pretty solid option, really, for an SMG. It's it's very much like an MP7. It's just better. It's just a better MP7, except like I said, for longer ranges. But that's uh, could be a fun gun to use, definitely.
All right, now for the KSP. So the KSP um, TTKs are pretty bad in Warzone, and this is not this is not because the KSP is a burst gun. Um, the TTKs on my website use the actual burst timings, so individual bullet timings. So if it takes eight shots to kill, uh, eight shots to kill, I have exactly the, the amount of time it takes to fire eight shots, the exact amount of time it takes to fire nine shots, ten shots, etc. Um, so that's on the website. So it's not like using an average fire rate for these TTKs. It's the actual bullet timings. Um, so they are very accurate numbers, and the KSP to chest at 250 health is very slow just because of how those burst timings line up. It takes eight bullets to kill, um, so you need uh, two full bursts, and then you have to wait for the burst delay, and then it takes an extra two uh, two shots um, to to down someone at 250 health. So that's the reason the TGK is so bad is because you have to wait for that burst delay uh, one more time. It looks a little bit better if you switch to extremities. Um, it competes a little bit better with the uh, MAC-10 and MP5, but it's still pretty bad. It's uh, just all around probably not competitive in the current meta of the game. The MAC-10 is just really, really good. Great movement speed, good TTKs, um, good ADS times, good hip fire. So I'm, I don't see a place for the KSP right now in, in the SMG category. All right, taking a quick look at the Milano. Uh, Milano A21, again, has a really bad TTK. Um, it's pretty terrible compared to the other SMGs, so I don't really see a place for it. This is 250 health chest shots. Let's look at extremities real fast. It's a little better on extremities, but still, it's just kind of, kind of bad. Just really slow to kill everywhere. So I don't, I don't think it's going to be any good in this meta. All right. Uh, last but not least, we have the Cold War MP5. So the Cold War MP5 is the Cyan line. Uh, we're 250 health chest shots right now. And you can see that the Cold War MP5 kills super fast, faster than the MP5, faster than the MAC-10 to the chest. Um, similar range to the MP5 from Modern Warfare, uh, a little bit less. It also has a lot worse bullet velocity, which is something to consider. Um, and if we switch over to extremity shots, uh, again, the Cold War MP5 comes out on top. So I'm surprised people aren't using this gun more. It kind of fries, actually. It's uh, absolutely a top-tier SMG right now. Um, I think it could be could be the best SMG the one of the things that make the Mac 10 so good is how how much range it has so that crazy TTK can extend all the way out to I think J God found it can extend out to like 25 meters or something with the right barrel um, so when I test all the barrels and everything we'll know better but for now the uh, the Cold War MP5 uh, looks like it's absolutely top tier to me like I'm surprised people aren't using it it's so good same for stomach shots again All right, everybody. Well, thank you all for watching. Um, I will put timestamps in this video because it's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, random short little segments on different guns. Uh, I don't think I missed any Cold War guns. There's a chance I did. Um, but yeah, we're working on updates to the site nonstop. I'm going to be getting all the attachment data as soon as I can. Um, thank you all for the support. Like, it's been legitimately wild these last few days, all the support that I've been getting from everyone, and I I super appreciate it. So... Uh, thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.